Good evening. Yesterday, I was speaking to my friend, and we were discussing about the importance of rolling edging program. And thankfully, he was in agreement of the fact that considering the volatility in the currency market, you name the currency and there is a volatility. It hardly makes any difference that there is no volatility, you please mention the name. So, example, it speaks about Japanese yen. It touched almost 1.63 and also went down to 140. When it was 110, around a year back, there were expectations that it might come down to 80, but forget 80, it went to 165. Let's take an example of Euro. Euro is currently 1.10. A year back, 1.12, around a couple of months ago, 1.06, and now 1.10. Speak about Swiss franc, CHF. It's currently around 0.86. It was 0.95, and now 0.86, which means nine big figures. Please note, nine big figures. Ladies and gentlemen, the very important thing with which we need to learn as a corporate treasurer is that how can we protect the cash flow book of our company? That's very quintessential. Technically speaking, there are three books a company needs to maintain. No, I'm not talking about cash flow statement, fund flow statement, PNL balance sheet. No, I'm not talking about that. These all are accounting issues, right? I'm talking about three books a company needs to maintain. Number one is a cash flow book. Number two is the fair value book. And number three is the net investment book. Predominantly speaking, cash flow book is something a company needs to maintain on a day to day basis. On a contrary, the fair value book a company needs to maintain on a month to month basis, sometimes quarter to quarter basis, and net investment book the company to maintain as and when the company is making investment. Those who are fresh, cash flow hedging means the hedging of your cash flow. Basically, Indian IT companies are getting dollars, GBP, Euro, Swiss franc, Japanese yen, Canadian dollar, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. You please name and they're getting all the currencies. Just think about Apple. Think about Google. Think about Microsoft. Think about Amazon, Facebook, Accenture, Sapient, all these big companies and they are practically working across the practically working and they are selling their product in every currency. So example, selling their product in dollars, euro, Swiss franc, GBP, Indian rupee, um, you just name it, you just name it. But the consolidation of the book is happening in dollars because the principal entity of the company is based out United States. Consolidation happening in dollar terms. The very important thing as an organization we need to see is how can we protect our cash flows using a quarter hedging rolling program or probably a monthly hedging rolling program or probably a semi-yearly hedging rolling program and yearly hedging rolling program. If we go upper, then the efficiency and effectivity I repeat, efficiency and effectivity of that rolling hedging program would come down. In my personal and respectful submission that the monthly rolling hedging program is one of the best programs we build. Because first of all, you hedge on a month-to-month -month basis. So today is 1st September. 
and suppose I have a monthly hedging rolling program of 12 months then I am sitting today I am hedging till August 2025 which means one year till 31st of August you can say some people deploy quarterly hedging rolling program they believe to hedge long term they believe to hedge three years, four years, five years. Generally, IT company employ quarterly hedging rolling program, but it is up to them how to, how, how they how they do that. And it is native when some employ six months hedging program. But the very important thing is a quarterly hedging rolling program or a monthly hedging rolling program, which you need to do is something which is technically known as risk ratios. So let's assume a simple example. There is a company called XYZ IT Private Limited Town. God forbid, if this name turns out to be a, an actual name, then this is purely a coincidence. XYZ IT Private Limited, and this company is technically having a long term contract with the client. Now, when you are having a long term contract with the client, there is a thing that is hitting you and benefiting you hitting you and benefiting you and that concept is known as cola cola means cost of living adjustment c o l a cola cost of living adjustment which means that when i started work for you then i am having so and so inflation so and so cost so and so employees so and so salaries facility cost and so and so total so and so but over the period of the time, the inflation grew, the taxes grew, the attrition grew, the salaries grew, operating cost grew. Henceforth, you need to compensate me about that relevant increase and that compensation is called COLA, cost of living adjustment. COLA is also of three types, but that I am not discussing in this video. Now, since many companies of the globe are having cola as a factor in their uh, agreements i don't know whether all companies have this but there are many who do have cola but when we have cola we are supposed to be very careful because cola impacts your hedge ratio that's very important in the sense like suppose there is a cola of five percent at the end of sixth month from the initial date of the contract which means that suppose you are having a contract of a million dollars assuming all dividends it means six months down the line fifty thousand dollars would increase in your invoice value because this is a cola which your customer say xyz is giving to that company Sometimes that cola is negotiable, sometimes cola is not negotiable, sometimes it is based on a formula and sometimes it is based on a range. So that is a very hardcore concept which I am not discussing. Now, very if we, now the role of a treasury function is not only to manage this cola, but also to manage a very important thing called FX clauses. Now, sometimes one happen you have a fx clause and sometimes what happen you don't have an fx clause so let me give you a very simple thing what is fx clause suppose that theoretically xyz it company private limited and that company is signing a contract with a very big company in say west, west indies and west indies agreed to pay them in euro and they agreed to have a invoice in euro on the country this company based in singapore it means the operating cost of this company is sing dollar singapore dollar while the invoice currency is the euro which means euro to sing dollar is the risk on their head which not only a risk of cash flow but also a risk of fair value now that i already discussed many times that not only a risk of cash flow but also a risk of fair value now very important thing is that when you have a fx clause now that fx clause means uh, that or, or what is the meaning of that fx clause is that the relevant client the relevant client agreed to pay you in a currency which you like 
So you are a Singapore based company, they will pay you Sing dollar. Now, they are a West Indies based company. The ultimate client is a West Indies based company, but how they are paying you Singapore dollar, that is not your problem, that is his problem. But you are getting the money in Singapore dollar, your work is in Singapore dollar, your cost is in Singapore dollar, which means there is no hedging which is required. The department which manages these things is called the business finance department. Sometimes business finance department and sometimes there is a, another department which is called negotiation department. Sometimes it is called FPNA also, financial planning and analysis. It depends upon company to company. Now, having said that, sometimes the FX clause is no, whereby the West Indies companies say no, we will pay you in euro. And why they are paying you in euro? Because the services which they are getting from you. They are selling these services to another customer in Europe, say PQR, and that customer is paying them euro because that customer is based in Europe. His currency is euro. He is paying in euro to West Indies and West Indies person paying euro to that uh, company in Singapore, which means the West Indies com company is taking a risk. On the contrary, definitely the risk of cash flow and fair value on the Singapore based company. Henceforth, ladies and gentlemen, quarterly rolling hedging program is a very important hedging program. But like I said, there are many factors which comes into the picture. First of all is the COLA, cost of living adjustment, FX clause, yes and no. Suppose it is a transfer pricing company, suppose it is a direct invoice company, double taxation treaty agreements come into the picture. There are humongous amount of things which comes into the picture. Henceforth, designing of quarterly rolling hedging program looks very simple on paper, but it is not. It is a highly, highly complicated issue. Of course, as the time would progress, we'll have more videos into the picture. But having said that, there is definitely a volatility in the currency market. There is definitely a volatility in the currency market and ladies and gentlemen, quarterly rolling hedging program or monthly rolling hedging program is an effective tool. But before you implement that, remember that it requires extensive expertise. And this video is only a concept. We are not asking anybody, not telling anybody to follow this. It is just a concept. Please take a note. This is Rahul Magan from Treasury Consulting. You have my number 9899242978. Let me repeat 9899242978. Thank you.